Yo guys, so this week I want to execute on an idea that's been on the back of my mind for quite a while now. And that idea is a simple inspirational quote generator. Every now and again I feel like I lose sight to the important stuff and just need a little pick me up, you know? But it's not always easy to get some random quote inspiration. So let's create an AI to solve this problem for us. Now, of course, there are many ways we can go about solving this, but obviously, we're going to use the power of machine learning to make this generator. Because we like challenges. So, where do we begin? I guess the best place to start is getting a bunch of quotes, which again, I wanted to do this for quite a while now, and at some point in the past that I don't even remember doing, I saved this data set of quotes in a variety of categories from the internet, which has over 75,000 quotes on it. And I'm going to use this file. Thank you, Pastor Jabril. Now to start, this is just way too many quotes. For instance, this quote here. I normally ignore the History Channel. Diablo Cody. Well. All right, Diablo, great to know, but not even in the slightest inspirational. So what we want to do is trim this file to have only inspirational quotes. Now, if some of you remember my lcnrd.py script, aka my text file cleaner that's always there for me in my time of need, we're going to pass our quotes through the script as our file to parse. Add the lowercase tag to lowercase all text, mostly because I refuse to make sure every quote is punctually correct. And then for our keyword key, we're going to point to a text file with a list of keywords, which for those of you who are not sure what this does, it reads every line and checks to see if keyword 0 through n is in the line or not. If even one keyword word is in the quote, then we keep it, or else we discard it. Simple enough, simple enough. Now I'm going to skip some stuff here because I don't want this to drag out. But the first problem we had to solve was, how can I decide which quote was inspirational or not? I essentially had to write or use some algorithm that goes quote by quote, classifying if it's either inspirational or not inspirational. And because I'm trying to grow a YouTube channel here and not spend two years on a single algorithm, I initially downloaded a list of positive and negative words because as we know, inspiration can come from either end of the energy spectrum and thought, eh, what the hell? Inspirational quotes must have some degree of positive and negative words in them, right? But, but the problem was that this file had like over 500 keywords or something crazy like that. And when I used these keywords to filter the quotes, over 80% of the quotes were not filtered out. And I mean this makes sense because the more keywords, the greater the probability that at least 1 out of 500 would be in the quote, right? Anywho, with over 80% of the quotes still remaining, it was next to pointless to even start training. So. Back to the drawing board I went. I decided to use only a few keywords that I shot in a dark thought summarize inspirational quotes. Specifically, these words here. You, your, I, me, my. Which brought it down from over 75,000 quotes to less than 40,000 quotes. So, about 50%. Still a bit too chaotic, sure. But I was way too antsy to get some sort of result to try anything else. So, I gave it a shot. Do you know what time it was? training time. We now have our filtered quotes to train on. This is our input data. I know some of you are probably expecting me to go over the actual machine learning code at this point, but let's be straight with each other. I'm not looking to make this into a 10 part series. Sorry, not this time. And the stats show that most of you will drop off if we start to get over technical. So I'm going to do a cop out and point you to a few channels where you can learn the material. Siraj, Daniel Schiffman, 3Blue1Brown, Centdex, Luis Serrano, Giant Neural Network, and MacHeads101. Links are all in the description. Have fun and don't give up. Besides, this LSTM script if you're interested is a script that I downloaded from somewhere on GitHub. If my memory serves me right, it was originally written by this developer and then converted by Crystal Ball V for the ML5 library at the time. I think this is the correct story. I can't fully remember. But I'll try and find the original code and put it in the description. Either way, I've just been heavily modifying and compartmentalizing this as need be. And I'll be completely honest with you guys. I still haven't completely wrapped my head around writing machine learning algorithms from scratch using TensorFlow and the like. And this is heavily due to it's taking longer than I'd like to admit to get used to Python syntax. So I've been trying to become a better Python programmer, but what the hell is this? So you're telling me if I want to initialize a 3x3 three three matrix, or a list, or whatever you call it Python, doing node equals 3 comma 3 gives me a 1 by 2 array? What? And the correct way to get a 3x3 three three array is by doing node equals 
bracket, 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 bracket times three? The dimensions are indicated by the number of brackets that I type? Oh, oh, and then it doesn't even give me the type of array that I'm looking for. Industry programmers, is this your king? <laughs> Rant aside, you see why it's easier for me to modify Python scripts than it is to write them? C Sharp Master Race. Oh, and while we're at it, here's an odd side tangent because some of you really put me on a pedestal for my Machine Learning from Scratch series, but as expert as Machine Learning from Scratch may sound, don't let it shine for you guys. Only do things from scratch if it's the only option, or if you want to get a solid understanding of something, never to prove a point. Unless, of course, your friend Tanner comes to the room and says, Prove to me that you can write machine learning algorithms from scratch, mate. This guy on the internet named Jabril told me to not do things from scratch to prove a point. And then, if Tanner goes, I've got candy. Then, yeah, 100% don't listen to my advice. <laughs> Look, what I'm really trying to say is, if the code already exists out there and you know how to use it, I say crack your knuckles and get to work, lads. Ah, I digress. Look, the point is, I stole an LSTM algorithm and have been slowly improving it over the past few months. I'm now going to feed it this quotes list file as input and have it train on it. However, we have yet another slight problem. I am currently in San Francisco with my laptop that does not have an NVIDIA GPU, meaning I'd have to do all training on the CPU, which would take forever. But thanks to the beautiful age that we live in, I'm going to package this input file with my LSTM algorithms ready to go, throw it on my Dropbox so that I can access it from anywhere in the world, and then use Google Chrome Remote Desktop to control my computer over 500 miles south in San Diego. And Voila! This dataset is now being trained on my sweet, sweet 1080 Ti GPU. Now, while it's doing that, I get to enjoy my time here in San Francisco. Okay, it's a few days later now, and I put a good amount of research into my inspirational quotes AI. So now, after all this training, we still haven't converged the model, and the quotes it generates is... comical, at best. Nonsensical on average though. But unfortunately, this is where we're going to stop this project for now. This has already been a lot to soak in, but if you're interested in continuing this project further, please let me know in the comments and we might make a part 2 for this in the near future. But before I let you go, there are a few things we need to address before talking about the next steps. One thing that is really important to talk about is the difficulty of language analysis. This is an extremely difficult task to solve, but I think projects like these are important because we all take one step closer to solving it. Though, don't be fooled. There is much greater research and results out there other than my use of language plus AI. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hello, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? But I still think it's quite impressive that our LSTM even performs as well as it does so far. Another issue is that I trained on a large data set, which comes with its own set of challenges. Challenges such as, just how well do the inputs represent our desired result? Is my input data even encoded right? Meaning, are there enough patterns for the models to learn from? How long will it take for me to explore the hyperparameters to find the right size, aka topology, for this generator? Things like this just take some time to figure out which aren't as problematic for smaller data sets. Wait a second, a smaller data set? That's it! 
How about we try and train a quote generator from a smaller data set? I'm just gonna do a quick Google search for its 100 best inspirational quotes. Sure, perfect data set size. Save these quotes, clean up the file a bit, and now LSTM, do yours. About 15 minutes later, and we now have an average cost under 0 0.01, which is fantastic. Now, generate.py, show me some samples. Whoa, not bad. Not bad at all. In fact, quite amazing. I mean, not only did we use a smaller data set, but it took less than half an hour. Why even waste our time collecting bigger data sets then? <laughs> well guys, I've been down this deceptive road many, many times before, and I want to go on yet another quick tangent about it, because I think it's an important just life lesson in general that I've learned with age. So there is no such thing as a free lunch. Meaning, every single pro has an equal and opposite con. It's the yin and yang, positive and negative, light and dark, equivalent exchange. Nature always seeks to balance every single thing. It's inescapable. There are no free lunches. But sometimes, it isn't as easy to find the opposite pair. But just because you can't find it, don't be so quick to dismiss it as non-existent. Sometimes you have to put in a little extra work to find it. Okay, I go on way too many tangents, I apologize. But what I'm getting at here is this. To find the opposite pairs to these amazing pros, all we have to do is sample from this generator a little more and you'll see. If we tell generate.py to generate about 100 quotes, when we look through them, you'll find that a lot of the quotes use a lot of the same words or sound very similar in structure. And that is due to the inherent nature of machine learning algorithms. This algorithm is literally copying its training data verbatim. Not to mention, this model will perform pretty well so long as you stay within the domain that it was trained within. But if we feed it words it's never seen before, or hell, even words that it's seen before but isn't used to that word being at the start of a quote for instance, your output will turn to mush faster than bread that's had the oven door open too soon. This is the con to the small data set in short training time pro. It could come in handy, but you have to know how to use it right. But this is not what we want, I don't think. <laughs> so there's that. But back to ways we can improve our bot, another route that we can take is to create a classifier algorithm that analyzes every quote, gives it a score, and if the quote exceeds the score threshold, then we serve it to the user. However, it isn't exactly obvious how we'd go about training such a classifier. I project this in itself will require a good amount of research, that ultimately might be better served embedding this research into the LSTM algorithm itself. But honestly, it sounds fun, and I actually have a couple of approach ideas for it. Lastly, we could use a different algorithm entirely. For instance, GANs are all the rage at the moment, and for good reason. The GAN algorithm, to put very simply, has two algorithms involved. Let's just call them teacher and student. In our scenario, I'm the presenter and I ask the student to generate a quote using random noise. The student gives me his generated quote, and I then at random give the teacher one of two quotes. The teacher will look at the quote and guess if the quote was either generated by the student or if it was an actual quote that I just gave them. If the teacher can guess correctly, then the teacher gets a point. But if the student can fool the teacher, then the student gets a point. Teacher and student play this game for a while, and the idea is that they both get smart enough to the point where the teacher is 50-50 guessing if the quote was by the student or not. Because the student will have became that good at generating quotes. And now that our student is a brilliant quote generator, next comes the obvious part. We will enslave our student to work for us for free generating quotes all day. And that's GANs 101. I haven't got to any GANs research yet, but holy hell, I can't wait to get into this stuff. Anywho, yeah. That's pretty much it. But if there's any next move I were to make, I think it'd be to make my dataset a bit more focused. My dataset just isn't focused enough. The filter algorithm that I performed on the quotes list, as we all know, was just lazy. And it still leaves way too much chaos in the dataset. And to be honest, I was so antsy, I didn't even look at the filtered quotes. But now that I think about it, there's no reason why our girl Diablo didn't make it to the filter. I was one of the keywords. So I need to be a bit smarter with my definition for an inspirational quote. But out of curiosity, what other quotes slipped through my weak filter? Let's see. I do not believe abortion should be legal. Herman Cain. Jesus Christ, Herman, I'm trying to run a YouTube channel here, man. Not split my audience on abortion in the comment section. Take it easy over here, man. But the point is, quotes like this should not be in my data set. Ideally, we want every single input in the data set to be as representative as possible. 
and we are failing our LSTM with quotes like these. Alright guys, I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. Let me know if you're interested at all with the part 2 and now let me know this was interesting enough to make a part 2 for. Lastly, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon to be notified when I put up the next upload. And follow me on Twitter for like exclusive builds and such. I promise you my Twitter is a lot of fun. And oh, some of you guys have been asking for this and I finally launched a Patreon if anyone is interested in supporting my work beyond YouTube. I currently have a couple of cool rewards listed and a couple of more to be added soon. But regardless, if you don't have the funds or you simply just don't want to support me on Patreon, don't feel bad, my content will always be free. It's just there for those of you guys who have been asking. And of course, if you do decide to support this channel, I can't thank you enough. And shout to all my current patrons who found my Patreon without me promoting it at all. So much love to you guys. But yeah, other than that, I hope to see you all next week, but whatever the case may be, remember to always feed your curiosity.